Frankie, and I'm here today to introduce Longevity. It's a great nutritional supplement to anybody that's eating right or not eating right. I take supplements on a regular basis, and Longevity cannot be beat, especially at some of the great price points. So go. Go to the theroadgrant.com or the uncensoredreport.com and click on Shop. Go down to Longevity, click on it, and you'll be helping out the operations of the station so that we can continue to bring you a fresh perspective on alternative news. Longevity, check it out today. 1-800-PET-MEDS. Yes, get your pet essentials, your, your medicines, your collars, everything you need online. And guess what? You'll be supporting the operations of this great set station, the Uncensored Report. So go to my website, click on the icon for 1-800-PET-MEDS and help us continue the information war that's going on. The insecurity, wouldn't you like to make your money work harder for you? Then you should consider joining philsgang.com where thousands of individual investors have successfully profited. This year I'm up 60% on my portfolio. Following your system has been fantastic. I've been with you for about a month and a half now and I'm already up 7%. I've been in the business for a long time and you're really one of the best I've ever heard. Well, I just want to let you know how great, what a great teacher you are. For over a decade, Philsgang.com's Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell have been teaching, coaching, and investing right along with all Phil's Gang members. I want to thank Donnie for market wrap. I bought 2,500 shares of AUI and sold it this morning at $820 profit. Why not join thousands of satisfied Phil's Gang customers today? Go to philsgang.com, philsgang.com, or call 877-600-4264. That's 877-600-4264. Call today. Today. As we track these new terrorist track concerns these new at home and overseas, we are reminded of warnings we heard back in 2007. America was fighting the Iraq war. President Bush had just ordered U.S. troops to surge in Iraq. And critics were demanding that the U.S. withdraw the troops. When President Bush issued this frighteningly accurate, as it turns out, assessment of what would happen if we did that. I know some in Washington would like us to start leaving Iraq now. Begin withdrawing before our commanders tell us we're ready would be dangerous for Iraq, for the region, and for the United States. It means surrendering the future of, Al uh, of Iraq to Al-Qaeda. It means that we'd be risking mass killings on a horrific scale. It would mean we allow the terrorists to establish a safe haven in Iraq to replace the one they lost in Afghanistan. It would mean be increasing the probability that American troops would have to return at some later date to confront an enemy that is even more dangerous. Okay, sorry about that, some technical issues. So what do you think about that, folks? This is the Francesco Abruzzino Show. This is Frankie Abruzzino, your humble host for the day. Seven years later, how accurate was George Bush, President George Bush? And uh, what a travesty it is that he was so accurate. So um, we got a great show, lots of stuff happening out there. I actually have a ton of news, and I do not think I'm going to get to it all because there's just so much out there over the weekend as usual. Um, and we only have one hour. This is a one-man show. This is the one man right here. I do everything. I do the research, the hosting, the Internet, the uh, page, the website page the technical aspects of this show so bear with me if i seem distracted if it seems as though i'm doing a few things it's probably because i am um let's go ahead and you're going to see a few commercials those are revenue sharing commercials please go to my website click on them if you click on them they'll tie you to my website and i'll get credit it'll help me with this operation after five years of basically doing this for free i decided to try and make a cup some money out of it well it's been five years on the local media in about a year on the national international maybe two years of uh just going out there and trying to communicate a message and trying to affect change hence the change educate change and inspire or educate and inspire and change um so let's go ahead and get started since there is so much news out there today we're going to start off though with this video and um it's basically the battle against isis and it's a, a defector who went out and he spoke with cnn and he basically was saying what the western fighters and what we could be uh 
what we can expect. It's an interesting interview. It's only about four minutes long, so I wanted to start the show off with that. And hold on. A rare conversation for you now with a man who, who knows ISIS from the inside. He defected from the terror group in Syria just a few weeks ago, and he sat down recently with CNN. We have to warn you, though, this exclusive report from our Damon contains some graphic images. There is no sign here of the progressive city that Raqqa once was. Now, the seat of power for ISIS. Some crucifixions, public executions for anyone who insists God, lashings for women who were not fully covered in any problem, beatings and imprisonment for keeping a store open during prayer time or selling cigarettes. Their inhumane brutality is felt daily, not just here, but across swaths of Syria and Iraq, now the so-called Islamic State. There is a commission for the prohibition of vice, passed with punishing anyone who violates regulations. This man, a Syrian in his 20s, defected from ISIS in Raqqa less than two weeks ago and still agrees with the ideology of ISIS. The main and principal goal of the Islamic State that they tell their new members is to establish an Islamic State that will encompass the Arab world. And after that, we go to the other countries. Raqqa is ISIS central command easily taken over by the organization after other fighting groups had already kicked the Syrian army out of military bases in the area. ISIS has now opened a logistics supply line that extends into Iraq. Raqqa is close to the border of Iraq, and we saw lately that weapons were going back and forth from Iraq. Already drawing foreign fighters, with estimates of several thousand from Western countries. We are coming and we will destroy you. Tightening concerns across Europe, with the UK recently raising its threat level from substantial to severe. The defector claims these foreigners could carry out attacks when they go home, but the security measures in those countries make it difficult for now. Since Western fighters joined ISIS, they consider their home country as infidels. If they have a chance, they will carry out attacks, because they think of it as an infidel country, and it should be fought. It is also perhaps why a Westerner was chosen to front the horrific beheading of journalist James Foley. It is possible that the goal was to project the image that a European or a Western person executed an American so that they can showcase their Western members and appeal to others outside Syria and make them feel that they belong to the same cause and that they too can do anything in support of ISIS in their respective countries. And there is also the internal indoctrination of innocent minds. Established more and more Islamic schools and altering education. Philosophy is prohibited. They canceled it as a kind of blasphemy. Many subjects have been canceled, like music and even sometimes sports. All of them have been canceled from the school curriculum. There is fear among the people, he admits, among those who don't subscribe to ISIS's ideology. But leaving is not a choice ISIS offers them. Or would even Siena be reached? Hey, sorry about that. Sometimes, sometimes the transition in over from that to this is um, a pain in the butt and it goes strong on itself. So, that's the, uh, what do you think of that? That just gives you the look at the inside into the insight of these individuals, to of these extremists that are associated with ISIS and how they plan on taking the uh, Westerners and trying to change their mindset into doing stuff that's uh, more along the lines of this is this um, train of thought is this is is hill is whatever you're calling them today um, so it's very interesting now I'm gonna go ahead and get set up for uh, me to opine on many different issues but I thought that video would interest many of you and give me a few minutes just or a couple just five minutes set up I'll be right back 
check out my patriot supply um they got the straw there that straw is great i tell you what folks you can go out and basically if we're in a critical situation and there's a massive hurricane there's no water guess what you use these straws the life straw out there in the pond and it cleans out all the water and gets you on it gets you filtered water how can you beat it check it out check the product and much more and help support the operations at the uncensored report.com hey this is frankie and i'm here today to introduce longevity it's a great nutritional supplement to anybody that's eating right or not eating right. I take supplements on a regular basis and longevity cannot be beat, especially at some of the great price points. So go, go to the roguerant.com or the uncensoredreport.com and click on shop. Go down to longevity, click on it, and you'll be helping out the operations of the station so that we can continue to bring you a fresh perspective on alternative news. Longevity, check it out today. Longevity, you should check it out if you're interested uh, in better health. I, take, I do take those supplements all the time, um, but, but I'm a bit of a workout freak. I'm in the gym doing an hour of uh, lifting and car actually about combined two hours of cardio lifting and all that stuff every every day. So I'm, I'm a bit of a freak with it. Stuff like longevity helps get you through it. So let's go ahead to our news. For some reason, I'm having some major technical issues today, and I'm not sure if it's the internet. The internet does seem to be bogged down a bit, so I may be utilizing other sources within the studio, which are pulling from it, and um, so hopefully we'll try to get that resolved over the next few days. But what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about um, Ukraine and what joining NATO would do, to, and could it provoke a nuclear war with Russia? And it's sometimes a lot of us just have it in the back of our head. We think of it, but then we think, you know what? There's no way in hell these guys would do this. There's no way these idiots in power, in control, these goofballs would go to such extremes. But some people fear it. And we have here this Stephen Cohen. He's one of the top experts on Russia. He's a professor emeritus at, of Russian studies and politics at New York University and Princeton. And he's also the author of several books on Russia and the Soviet Union. So he's definitely an expert that's out there. And he's squarely placing the blame on the West if they're over this whole crisis in the Ukraine. And, and I don't, I don't, um, I, I basically agree with him in terms of if you follow everything that's been happening, if you follow my show, you know that the um, through the leaked phone calls with the assistant ambassador, Nolan, <coughs> that the U.S. basically financed the whole Ukrainian crisis. We put in place the public government that was also discussed on the same conversation on the phone call, and this all came about because the previous government in the Ukraine refused refused um sorry I'm, i keep getting sex and i and i need to turn it off refused to take part in the um in the joining of nato and become a grow in a tighter alliance with them um with the european union so not nato the european union so then we got upset we started funneling money into the protesters the protesters ended up um getting rid of the government and they installed the puppet government that we wanted with uh, major bankers on there that would see um, more be more in line with the EU, would allow NATO on the border, would allow the EU to come in there and um, filter money in to help out many of the, the government and the corporations. Not really the people. The people aren't being helped there. But let's get let's get back and and talk about basically what would happen. What would happen if we? decide to fall through with NATO troops on the border with Russia. And, um, you know, who's responsible? And, and as I said, I agree with this Cohen guy. The U.S. is responsible. You know, one day, the historians, they'll look back and they'll say that America, America had blood on their hands from this whole incident. You've had over 3,000 people that have died. Most of them civilians. They couldn't move quickly enough to get out of there. They were stranded. Women, small children, elderly women. Elderly women. You got a million refugees that are streaming out of there. But many are sitting there and saying, hey, America, you brought this on. And if the Ukraine joins NATO, 
there's many concerns from individuals like this Cohen that it could lead to nuclear war. And, uh, you know, but and, and you, the other thing, too, is you keep hearing about having Ukraine join the um, the Soviet Union, but then you got to sit there and look and see, is this something that's even feasible? Can they can they even join NATO? Because by NATO's own rules, Ukraine cannot join if the country does not control its own territory, and it doesn't. Kiev controls less and less each day. It lost Crimea, it's, uh, it's losing Donbass, it's losing territory each and every day. Secondly, you have to meet a certain economic, political, and military criteria to join NATO. And, and right now, Ukraine does not meet any of those. Ukraine is linked to Russia, not only in terms of being Russia's essential security zone, a buffer zone with NATO, but by language, by intermarriage, by um, politics, many other connections there. And there's millions, if not tens of millions of Russians and Ukrainians that are married together. They've, they, they, it used to be part of the Soviet Union, guys. This is essentially the Ukraine is felt to be part of the whole Russia um, ge ge geography. But if you put in NATO, what's going to happen? Are you going to put up a barricade through millions of families? Do you think Russia's going to sit there and allow NATO to sit right on their border? That would be like us allowing Mexico to sit Russia up right on our border. So Russia's doing what we would do. They're acting militarily. Um, just, you know, they're looking over what's happening, what just happened over in Wales with the NATO meeting. You know, they're, they're creating this so-called rapid um, deployment team of 4,000 fighters. But what, what, what will 4,000 fighters do? 15,000 or less rebels in Ukraine are crushing 50,000 um, Ukrainian army soldiers out there. 4,000 against a million man Russian army? That's complete and utter nonsense. All it's going to do is provoke. Putting this fast reaction team of 4,000 uh, army soldiers with the NATO helmets on, the NATO uniforms representing the NATO is just going to antagonize Russia. And they can't do anything against the million man army. So the real reason for creating this so-called rapid deployment force is that they say um, it needs infrastructure. And the infrastructure that is uh, plain language in military bases, they want to put bases there. And they want to put the bases there on Russia's border. And they said they were going to put them there. You know, they've already talking about putting them in the Baltic, Poland, and Romania. And so this temporary operation, and, and I think I, last week I covered how NATO is indeed, it was supposed to be a temporary setup. But they've been expanding for 20 years. And it's primarily been through political means, their expansion. But now they're wanting to, to bring it even further. They're wanting to go into this military expansion, this world power, this world globalist domination. And they want to bring what you, you know, the last Cold War was over there in Berlin. Now they want to bring it right to Russia's footsteps, right to their door. And it's not going to happen. You know, they're already saying, Russia's already said, hey, we're going to abolish the uh, 1987 pact that we made with uh, Reagan and Gorbachev. We're taking it seriously. If you do this, this, we are, they're going to say Nance. And when we say Nance, we mean Nance. You know, and you got you got Obama's in there saying, "Oh, well, you know, conventional war, we're much stronger than Russia." But it's not going to come down to that, folks. It's going to come down to nuclear. They have ten thousand tactical nuclear weapons, and some of them are battlefield nuclear weapons. They can be fired. They don't need an airplane. They can shoot them right from their territory. Think about it, folks. They're radioactive. They're nuclear. They've never been used, but Russia will use them, and they have about 10,000 of them. We have about 500. And Russia's military doctrine clearly states that if they're threatened by overwhelming conventional force, they will use these tactical nuclear weapons. So when Obama's out there saying, oh, we can blow them away conventionally, we got this greater army, he's full of crap. And he needs to settle down. Him and all the other globalists that are trying to get us into this war. They need to settle down. And this brings up the whole crisis with the dollar. How it's tied to Russia. 
in China and the BRIC countries, basically. And the collapse of the dollar. What will happen? Um, you know, it's tied to that. It's tied to, to our, our Federal Reserve. The non this is a private bank. It's a commercial entity. It's not a government entity. And how they're destroying this economy. And will they collapse the, the entire global monetary system? And that's the question that many of us have to start asking. Especially with the, um, the political tensions around the world. And are they indicative of a fast approaching breaking point? There's not a single populated region on Earth right now that is not experiencing sweeping changes around there, folks. Look at Europe, the Middle East, Asia, Americas. It's happening everywhere where you have um, instability. Yeah, but I think Venezuela's got inflation up in the 40% range. So, I mean, trying to make sense of all can, can be a daunting task, but make no mistake, all these events are interrelated, and their un outcomes will have a direct impact on us, America. And the little secret of these governments is that there's a sign of war over the world's resources going on right now. And right now, a lot of people are deep, trying to get away from the dollar. They want to devalue the dollar. They don't want it as a reserve currency. It gives America too much power. And American partners all around the world are coming under pressure from Russia and China, who are already out there actively using other forms of currency. And so you got a lot of people that rely on these two countries, Europe, the Middle East, oil partners, petrol oil. I'm telling you, the death of the dollar is upon us. And we're starting to see a global power shift um, begin. And many of these countries are trying to diversify out of the dollar. So what do you do? When will it happen? Will we see the death of the petrol dollar? There's a shift afoot, and what's going to happen? It's uh, it's it, it, and basically it's simple. The end boils down to power and resources. The world's dependent upon food, energy, raw materials. It only makes man, um, sense that the conflicts will rage on, and we're going to bring about the devaluing of the dollar. Discussions of possible collapse of the dollar um, they often center around center around such things as the event that will take uh, place domestically in our economy. But the dollar doesn't operate just inside of a bubble. It's a world's reserve currency, and it's that for a reason. Some 66 countries worldwide either utilize it as their primary can currency or they're pegged to it as a reserve currency. So, so what does this mean to us? So if and when the dollar comes under attack, the fall will be everywhere. The collapse will happen simultaneously and affect billions of people worldwide. I've said before, we will no longer be able to print our money like we're doing right now to cover our debt. They're going to call. They're going to come up and say you need austerity, and I think the austerity, the impact will be a lot worse than what we're seeing in Greece on austerity. A lot worse than we're seeing in Italy. A lot worse than we're seeing in Spain, folks. Thirty-three um, percent of the nations of the world are submitting their currency sovereignty to the U.S. Federal Reserve. And if and when the U.S. loses the currency status, it will be a literal collapse of the entire global monetary system. And, you know, and the system's been built on lies, on truths. It's a big Ponzi scheme. Big, huge Ponzi scheme. So, so basically, when this whole final game is up, it, it will wreak havoc across the global economies, the markets, the monetary systems. And so you should be concerned. And you should prepare. Prepare for a currency collapse. It only makes sense. How can you prepare, though? As the dollar is becoming nearly worthless, the cost of essential goods like food and energy are skyrocketing. You're seeing the increase in the inflation, even though they say it's not there because they're cherry-picking their numbers. The inflation is there, and that's because that dollar is being so devalued. You know, what do you do? Do you buy into uh, gold? Do you buy into silver? Americans especially have forgotten about the one true currency. With us approaching nearly $20 trillion in national debt, the whole system's built on a lie. But the lie affects the whole world because the U.S. dollar is the world's currency. The gold market, it's distorted by governments and central banks around the world. 
in, in today's environment of quantitative easing, trillion dollar annual deficits, uh, negative, negative interest rates, you can exchange your fiat currency for one ounce of gold for less than the cost a mining company has to produce it. And physical demand is setting records, folks. And that's because the world is on the brink of a major fiat currency crisis. What do you do? Do you go into Bitcoin? So, I mean, you got to start asking yourself, what is the dollar's future? Are you overly exposed to the dollar? Can you envision a scenario where the world turns against the U.S. dollar? And these are all the questions that we need to ask ourselves out there, folks. We're going to play a quick video, and this is uh, why the investment will soar very soon. Let me get you guys set up for it. Let's click play here. Have either adopted the dollar's legal tender, peg their currency to it, or manage their exchange rate against it. This is 33% of the nations of the world all submitting their currency sovereignty to the U.S. Federal Reserve. If or when the U.S. loses its reserve currency status, this will be a literal collapse in the entire global monetary system, a system that is built on lies, fraud, and theft. So where does one look to protect themselves? Why are so many of the people who see this crisis near imminent recommending gold? Gold is the one physical asset that is held and accumulated by central banks. The very powers that are printed with the currency that is held and accumulated by the people of all income categories is buying gold. In BRIC nations, where they are clearly moving away from the dollar system, they are accumulating gold. China is both the number one gold producer and importer. Russia accumulated a record 77 tons in 2013. Germany last year shocked the world when the Budapest Bank requested all of its gold back from France and 300 tons held in the U.S. How after more than a year, Germany has only received five tons from the U.S., which is nothing. China, in March of 2013, two months after Germany's request, imported 223 tons in a single month from Hong Kong. Here in the U.S., there hasn't been an audit on gold held in Fort Knox since the 1950s. North America only accounts for 3% of all global retail bar demand. Living in the heart of the fiat bubble, Americans especially have forgotten the one true currency. With the nation approaching $20 trillion in national debt, our entire system is built on a lie. But this lie affects the entire world since the U.S. dollar is the world's currency. The gold market today has been so distorted by governments and central banks around the world today in an environment of quantitative easing, trillion dollar annual deficits, and negative interest rates. You can exchange your fiat currency for an ounce of gold for less than the cost a mining company takes to produce. In 2014, all-in costs were 1620 per ounce, with an average price of 1411 per ounce. Recently, gold was sold for less than $1,300 an ounce. Physical demand is currently setting records, with most of the demand coming from the east. Soon, North America and the world will begin to accumulate gold. The world is on the brink of a major fiat currency. So the leaders of China and Russia got together to talk about a way they could come up with their own currency. The biggest energy deal in history could be the catalyst that leads to the greenback losing its place as the world's reserve currency on Russia and China's $400 billion natural gas agreement. FutureMoneyTrends.com has put together for your benefit a special report titled Your Gold Protection and Profit Strategy Guide. This report includes reviews on bullion storage options, and three gold stock suggestions where the top shareholders are people like Eric Brock, Rick Rule, and Doug Casey, including one that Rick Rule and Doug Casey have been quietly accumulating millions of shares. There are three things you need to ask yourself right now. What is the dollar's most likely future? Are you overly exposed to dollar-denominated assets like your income, savings, and the country you reside in? Can you envision a scenario where the world turns against the U.S. dollar? Are you prepared for these three answers? Visit futuremoneytrends.com slash gold. Receive your free copy of our new... Okay, so there, there you have it, folks. Um, interesting information in the financial market, on uh, the dollar. If you watch this show, you know it's always been a concern of mine over uh, the reserves, uh, current being for reserve currency and the impact that it has on the global system out there. And if we were to lose it, the impact it would have on the United States. Um, 
It, it's food for thought, food for thought. Let's go to a commercial, and I'll be right back. Is your money manager giving you safety and security? Wouldn't you like to make your money work harder for you? Then you should consider joining PhilzGang.com, where thousands of individual investors have successfully profited. This year, I'm up 60% on my portfolio. Following your system has been fantastic. I've been with you for about a month and a half now, and I'm already up 7%. I've been in the business for a long time, and you're really one of the best I've ever heard. Well, I just want to let you know how great, what a great teacher you are. For over a decade, Philsgang.com's Phil Grandy and Donald Cogswell have been teaching, coaching, and investing right along with all Phil's Gang members. I want to thank Donnie for market wrap. I bought 2,500 shares of AUI and sold it this morning at $820 profit. Why not join thousands of satisfied Phil's Gang customers today? Go to philsgang.com, philsgang.com, or call 877-600-4264. That's 877-600-4264. Call today. Hey, everybody. Have you thought about fluoride, how it's dumbed us down? Why don't you get Fluoride Shield to try? Or how about Survival Shield? to help you get the iodine that's been taken out of our salts. Give both of these products a try. Just go to therograd.com or theuncensoredreport.com. Click on my shop area and click on the InfoWars icon. It'll get credit to the operation and help us continue to get the message out there. Have a great day. All right, folks, we are back. Let me get rid of that echo. There we go. Okay, now we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to discuss a little bit about the um, the dragnet surveillance that uh, the Dow Jones and that president, not Dow Jones, that the DOJ memo states that the president believes he has. Then we're going to possibly talk about the stealth towers and Stingray and the impact that's having on us on these warrantless um, invasions of privacy. But first, let's get to this dragnet surveillance issue. And the Obama administration wants everyone to know that he has been in the phone. And he claims the power to conduct dragnet surveillance on every American's phone records. And it's not going to bother revealing the sources to you. He doesn't care if you know or not. He doesn't think you should be told that you're being spied on. And it's called the Stellar Wind Program of the NSA. And Stellar Wind is set of a warrantless surveillance and data collection activities that George Bush authorized after 9-11. And, and folks, this was a huge concern back then. I, don't, I, I remember everybody was concerned that all this, uh, given the government all this extra uh, capability, this power, to this authority to go out and eavesdrop would be abused. And they guaranteed us it wouldn't. It would be controlled. They would not use it on Americans that are just sitting there doing nothing. But that's not the truth out there. It's sort of like when they say when they're collecting data. The, I, I forget how they say, state it. They'll, it goes on like, yeah, sure. We're not collecting the data. And we're, a person's not seeing the data. Well, what's really happening is a computer's taking all that data, generating all that data within their organization. And if they ever want it, they can go to it. But it's funny how they play semantics with this little word game. Uh, but everybody's being spied on, folks. And they're being spied on with this stellar one. That's one way Stingray's another. And despite... Uh, egregious violations, violations of our Constitution, stellar win... It remains in effect. In Obama's administration, the Department of Justice could care less what you think about it. Could care less about the Constitution. The NSA could still rely on the authorization that was set out um, through this declassified memo that came out. It's called the Goldsmith Memo. And it doesn't have to, um, it doesn't have to because the they're saying basically that FISA, the FISA court continually rubber stamps their requests to collect phone data and conduct government dragnets, and all based upon this memo, all based upon that law back after the Patriots Act back in September 11, 2001 with the um, September 11th crisis with George Bush. They're saying FISA court just rubber stamps it. We can do what we want. Um. So you gotta, you got to ask yourselves, and back to this memo, why would that single section still be classified month after the rest of the information has been out there to the public? And a lot of people are wondering if this portion of the memo, which is about 15 pages, 
if it's still protected because Obama wants to show that regardless of congressional action to reauthorize this dragnet surveillance, he will continue to carry it out under his own presumed authority. Authority he believes he has. He doesn't believe he has to justify it to anyone. Not a citizen, not a congressperson. Notice the words warrantless, folks. Warrants. Goldsmith memo, this whole memo asserted that the president has the inherent constitutional authority to conduct warrantless surveillance on us, folks, on citizens. Where's the right of the people? Where's the right of the people against unreasonable searches and seizures? It's being violated, yet nothing's done. Nothing's taking place here. Nobody's standing up. You're not seeing major media report on this. And, and day by day, the dossier of dictatorship being compiled by Obama grows thicker and thicker. He says after, you know, this is, this is what's amazing. I was sitting there listening today about executive order with immigration. And, he, and it's, it's so political. And he, I think he thinks we're idiots. We're morons. He's sitting there saying, we're not, I'm going to do it after the election. Obviously, he doesn't want to do it before the election because the majority of the Americans, based upon just about every poll out there, don't agree with giving these guys citizenship. So he's going to wait till after the election where he can just put it in there and hopefully um, his boys will be reelected and he'll just run away with um, uh, making all these illegals citizens. And he thinks that Americans are too dumbed down to realize this. This guy would make Caesar proud. And, and I'm going to show you too, folks. Um, we got a story coming up where we're going to discuss the, uh, the employment in California. And I think that the number, I got to pull up the story, I think it's 30% of the people that are employed in California are illegals. But again, he, he doesn't care. He thinks we're too stupid. How about the cell phone towers? You're hearing the story that it's it's all over the internet now about these um, encrypted phones that found fake towers. I think there was 17 fake towers across America. They don't belong to anybody. If you look them up on the site, the FCC doesn't have them registered with anyone. They're mystery cell phone towers. Nobody is accepting um, ownership of them. And they were discovered through using this crypto phone 500. And these interceptors are they're not always towers, folks. We had this story here, the Stingray. And how it made news here locally in Venice is they, it was being used in Sarasota and Northport. And the ACLU, we have this guy, they call him the jailhouse attorney, Mike Barfield. He's, a, he's done some time as a felon, but now he works for the ACLU. And he's out there, and this is one of the good things that he's ever done. He did a Freedom of Information request on Stingray just to see... Uh, get information on it and see what it's all about and Bespa who's down in Northport who's got a whole handful of issues himself down there say, said look we were told by the government that we don't have to that it's uh, 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 we're protected under some rights we don't have to give this information out but basically they're out there driving around with this little device and it's it's acting as its own cell phone tower it's picking up these conversations and then they're using those conversations to go in and persecute an individual, get a warrantless, a warrantless seizure of data because they're not getting warrants to get this stuff. So it's mimicking these cell phone powers. Um, they're getting all this information and law enforcement across the country does not have a, a, a standardized procedure for um, obtaining permission to use these devices. And they don't really care, folks. They don't really care. They say they don't need it. So when did we become so dumbed down on this? How about this one? The, uh, how they're trying to break the internet. And it, it all comes in line. Um, you have this uh, stark warning about government's ability to abuse technology, to muzzle citizens, to track our movements, to shut down peaceful protests. And now it's, you're seeing it from the Internet Governance Forum. This is a post-known reality, and the revelations of mass government surveillance programs are continuing to rattle people all over the place. It basically demonstrates how the governments, it's not just the U.S., are conducting broad, unfocused surveillance of, of their citizens, of their individuals, and of other countries and other companies. 
We need some kind of reform, but we cannot allow policymakers to play engineers and break this internet, which is coming up. But unfortunately, many leaders want to do that. They're calling for all data of the citizens to be stored locally in one country. Or in a, in a controlled country, we'll pluralize it. They want to change fundamentally how the internet works. They want to control it. We've already known that um, ICANN wants to give up uh, the naming rights, and everybody's all over that because the United Nations wants to control it. They want to censor. It, the internet would go from being flexible, efficient, and open global network to this rigid, failure uh, network with all kinds of restrictions and surveillance. And you should be alarmed. You know, right now, the internet allows information to flow through all parts of the world. No boundaries. It's, res it's resilient. No blockages, no broken connections. And that's because they don't have to follow any predetermined routes. But that won't be the case under this lo data localization law that governments are trying to get out there. That's going to require internet service to store data in each other's um, user's home country, and it'll keep, create this huge uh, barrier, bureaucratic barrier on the internet. Then there's always the problem with government intrusion. They got all that data. You're going to see more violations of people's privacy. Uh, requiring these countries to store data within their borders means that national governments will have, um, have much easier access to citizen communications. Could you see the potential for abuse there, people? It won't. Uh, local data laws won't do much to limit NSA surveillance either. So what do we do? We have to be concerned with this new uh, law that's going out there and how they're trying to take over the um, internet and impose tighter restrictions. Make it easier for them to take, violate our privacy and get our communications. I'll be right back after this commercial message. Did you know that the Bead Room, Macy's, and Sam's Club are now part of my organization where we are doing a revenue sharing program? So go to my webpage, theuncensoredreport.com. Click on any of those three links and take advantage of some of the free shipping or discounts that you may get. In return, you're supporting the operation and allowing me to continue to get the message out, both locally, nationally, and internationally. Thanks for supporting the program. Get some of this great apparel from therogrant.com or the Uncensored Report or the Vinescoop.com. We have hats, shirts, coffee mugs. They say educate, inspire, and change. Or for my Scoop fans, it'll say the Vinescoop, Sarasota Scoop, etc. Help me with this operation so I can continue to get a fresh perspective on the news out to the masses. Thanks a lot, and have a great day. Just go to my website and check out My Patriot Supply. Um, they got the straw there. That straw is great. I tell you what, folks. You can go out, and basically, if we're in a critical situation, and there's a massive hurricane, there's no water, guess what? You use these straws, the life straw, out there in the pond, and it cleans out all the water and gets you un it gets filtered water. How can you beat it? Check it out. Check the product and much more and help support the operations at theuncensoredreport.com. Check out my... Hey, sorry about that, folks. I got, got a little distracted trying to pull up my next thing. I'm, I'm jumping all over the place because I'm limited on time. So I'm trying to get those stories that are more important and more pressing out there that I want to discuss and communicate to everybody. And... This next thing we're going to discuss is um, we're going to go into Tom Corburn and how he wants a constitutional convention. We're going to look at that because they want to make a bunch of amendments or changes to the Constitution. And right now we're going to discuss uh, the democracy and is it doomed abroad? You know, you have the whole world order out there. The one that uh, Kissinger came out and said, oh, yeah, it's out there. But the world order is basically falling into disarray. The U.S. government must confront the fact that other true grid power shares are um, other true great power shares our values. Sorry. Are we the only idiots who can get things right? Or are there other types of governments, other um, countries that can do it better? 
Even though the ordeal in Ferguson has prompted lectures from around the world, we have the United Nations telling us what, how we should treat human rights. Because that's the kind of question that more of us are apt to ask about our democracy. Is this world unraveling and are we watching it right in front of us? Is it happening as we live and speak today? You got headlines, big and small there. They proclaim bracing news. Dem um, uh, demar democratization as a global project is over. Russia's invading Ukraine. Um, you got the whole ISIS thing. Um, you have uh, the Nigerians with the Boko Haram. Pakistan, they're heading towards some kind of military coup. Libya's in free fall. The, so the list just goes on and on. So when it comes to the practice of democracy, Americans have a few illusions about how um, our own incompetence, divisions, and negligence are. The U.S. is alone in its combination of political stability and our projection of power out there. That strength has put us into this very vulnerable position. Not only does it make America into a country that's most responsible for propping up what's left out of the current world order, it makes America seem like the country that's responsible, even when it isn't or it shouldn't be. It jacks us into conflicts because of our ties to the United Nations and NATO and our uh, perceived strength. And they're conflicts that most of them we'd want to keep an arm's length from. Who wants to be in Syria? Who wants to be in the Ukraine? And it's, it also turns every minor conflict into a, a situation that has global implications. And we need to start looking at it. So we need to look at it. Is democracy dead? Is it dead? It is not the President Obama's fault that this is happening either. I, I'd love to say that, but it isn't. You know, I'm not like Obama. Obama will sit there. <laughs> He, I, I think his latest one is he's blaming in the kids for the elite, bringing up this perception that we have a border issue. Um, he was bringing, blaming the media over the fact that uh, he was perceived as enjoying a leader golf game instead of dealing with the crisis at hand last week. And Bush and other things. So he's not fully at fault, but he, he is somewhat at fault. Republicans are now broadly in favor of hitting back at ISIS. The White House has gamely dispatched jet fighters to the Caliphate. This is not too little, it's too late, in the sense of that we ought to have carpet bombed the desert a long time ago. But we couldn't because why? Because we financed, we trained, we sponsored ISIS. So we couldn't really do that, could we? You know, liberals are out there defending the president, as they always do. Conservatives are out there attacking, as they always do. Unfortunately, neither has been very successful. Each has merely postponed the problem, and neither political party has shown much understanding of how to start solving the issues out there. No matter how much we ascribe to the ultimate blame for the geostrategic debacle, it has been, it has tempted uh, um, ordinary Americans to give in a strong prejudice. The, and that is the sense that the rest of the world is simply screwed up in a way that America is not. That we are great and everybody else are a bunch of goofball idiots. That we, the United States, we're the only real powerful nation out there with a stable democratic government from the ground up. I don't, do you guys think that's true? I don't know. I don't think it is. We do have friends around the world that sure will tear for peace. Switzerland, New Zealand, Costa Rica. Fa the sad fact is that Europe and its former colonies are still mostly trapped between the reactionary longing to re-enchant the world and the radical fantasies of a perpetual revolution. So we need to start looking at it. Is democracy doomed to broad? I don't know. There's so much chaos out there. I don't think, obviously, we're not going to see it anytime in Russia, Ukraine, Middle East. You're not going to see it anytime soon. It's scary, folks. And it's concerning. Now you have uh, Tom Corburn. He's out there. He's pushing for a constitutional convention. 
He's this junior senator out of Oklahoma, and he wants to join the um, efforts to call for an Article 5 convention to amend the Constitution. And um, he's saying he, he, he's known to be a fiscal conservative as well as traditionalist on social issues. He said he's frustrated with the gridlock in Washington that has blocked the entitlement reform of the entitlement programs and other measures needed to get spending under control by the federal government. He feels that amending the Constitution will open up the opportunities to do this. He plans to join many and a few individuals out there that are organizing on the political left and right to seek to invoke Article 5 of the Constitution, which empowers states to summon a convention for the purpose of amending the Constitution. It requires two-thirds or three, 34 of the states to say, yeah, let's do it. And there's been no update on the Constitutional Convention since 1780, Constitution, I'm sorry, since 1787. All 27 amendments since, uh, have, that have been adopted, including the Bill of Rights, were adopted by alternative, alternative procedures. I don't, I don't know where I stand on this, folks. I think I, I see these government officials. I see them as opportunists. I see them as people that will put together a plan that will benefit their special interest, their self-interest with loopholes that will um, make our government even worse. Um, you know, the states won't be able to dictate precise language of the amendments at the convention, but they can um, discuss the scope and debate the scope of them. But, you know, they're doing this because there's not enough votes to impeach Obama. Obama's running rampant. He's violating the laws. So is it a good thing that we could institute something like that to get fiscal control, to try to rein in this out-of-control government? Yes, but again, I always sit there and I reflect on what will happen if they build, you know, when you get a bunch of politicians in a room that are controlled by special interests and they're redesigning the law. You know, when it comes to defending the powers under the Constitution, Congress has demonstrated its devotion to two constitutionally protected rights, the right to remain silent when the president initiates another American war, and the right to complain when it turns out to be a disaster. The inactive government out there. So I don't know if we want them up there making decisions that impact our well-being. Um, we're gonna, This next thing, we're just going to cover it. It's, on, uh, it's more of a health issue, and it's an aspartame. And the impacts of it. And I was going to cover uh, autism and mercury and some other stuff, but we're going to go with this one right now. And how it's linked to premature deaths of women. They took a decade-long study of 60,000 women. And it confirmed that drinking diet soda sweetened with aspartame is linked with a 30% increase in heart attacks and a 50% increase in death risk. And the findings have already been partially swept under the rug. What a surprise. And um, it's being done by big Coca-Cola, big Pepsi firms. And they're, they're saying that it's a false explanation that diet drinks don't necessarily cause these risks, but are instead merely correlated with them. You see, because aspartame basically is a neurotoxin. And what scientists refuse to explore is that it is this neurotoxin. The reason why women who drink diet soda have a 50% increase in death risk is that it's far more likely to be caused by what's in the diet soda rather than some of the lifestyle choices. Aspartame. Aspartame is made from feces of genetically engineered bacteria. It's not natural sugar, but it's more of a chemical compound created in a lab. It's used in diet sodas. It breaks down to a number of chemicals. It's used in your gum. So why, uh, you know, you got to ask yourself on a, a lot of these questions with this stuff. Why is aspartame um, so frequently linked to blurred vision, headaches, neurology problems? And yet it's repeatedly consumed in the form of diet drinks. There's over 90 side effects with aspartame, folks. You know, the, you know these scientists are saying it's harmless, but they were also at one point saying mercury was harmless. 
And you got soda companies that are, their main concern is making money. But you got them and misinformed doctors who try to pretend that there's no side effects, that aspartame's okay for you, that people are just imagining headaches, they're imagining blurred vision, numbness, insomnia. That's how unethical this whole soda industry is. They'll poison their own uh, customers with neotoxic um, chemicals, call them delusional, just so that they can continue to rake in the money. And the bottom line is, is if you drink that soda, you are essentially murdering yourself. And they're calling it the slow suicide. There's uh, thousands of healthier beverages, tea, to, uh, tea, fruit juices, mineral water. Drink those. Find a healthier beverage and stop poisoning yourself with this damn diet of soda crap. All right, folks. Sorry I was a little off today. I've had issues where I just cannot sleep. And um, this is like the fourth day in a row, and it's starting to impact me. So, um, unfortunately, I don't feel like I had a great show because I was just a little bit exhausted. So, uh, we will be back tomorrow. Um, we'll Hopefully, I'll get a great night's sleep tonight, and we'll have a lot better show we'll present to you. Um, Again, the whole idea is to bring information that's not available out there in the major media to you so that you're informed, you're educated, and in some ways try to inspire you and get you to change and go out there and affect change. Um, from, from aspartame in your soda to um, uh, the president wanting to bring about um, with his pen and uh, phone executive order to legalize all these illegals that are crossing the border but thinking that we're so stupid that if he does it after the election we won't realize what he's up to and we will still elect a democrat into office so that they can keep power and not cause any issues bring about any concerns over him executing executive privileges like he tends to do um remember to visit any of the sponsors and we will be back tomorrow everybody have a great day